What's up guys, I got my good friend Ethan Buckman here. Ethan is the founder of Cosmos, and I won't be talking about Cosmos because he's the man to talk about it. Ethan, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks, Amir. So why don't you start off and tell us what's Cosmos? What's Cosmos? Well, so this project started years ago um, when Jaquan founded the Tendermint project essentially to build a secure proof of stake blockchain and cryptocurrency system. And since then, Tendermint has evolved quite a bit, has become a lot more general purpose, useful for much more than just currencies. And now that we're cut, we last year we were kind of reevaluating where to go with Tendermint and take, sort of taking a look at the space, seeing all the open problems. And we decided, you know what? Now that we have this really strong underlying consensus system, let's use this to go back to the original vision of building out a public proof of stake cryptocurrency. But rather than just having, you know, just another dumb currency, we want to actually use this to solve some of the outstanding problems in the space. In particular, scalability and interoperability across different kinds of cryptocurrencies and different blockchains. So the essential idea with Cosmos is that it's a network. It's essentially a network of blockchains where you have many independent blockchains that are all able to interoperate with one another by moving coins and moving data through a central hub. But down the road, there could certainly be more hubs. And what we're really focused on is rather than like, defining a particular model and, and throwing out that model and saying this is the best model, we're building Cosmos as a set of much smaller, much more module primitives that can be composed in the way that you think is best to put together um, you know, your public blockchain network. So we're doing it in one particular way, but the modules we're building are going to be much more general purpose than just for the Cosmos network. So you probably get this question a lot is, what's the difference between you and Ethereum? Great question. We do get it all the time. Um, we, we have a different focus. So Ethereum, the main component of Ethereum is the Ethereum virtual machine, which is the, the application state that runs on their proof of work blockchain. What you can do with Cosmos is you can, can support the Ethereum virtual machine completely in its entirety, like exactly to spec, and actually use the Cosmos network to upgrade the capacity of Ethereum. So you can build a bridge to the Ethereum network, allow people to move their Ether onto the Cosmos network, and then have many independent Ethereum blockchains running on the Tendermint consensus, and that provides both the vertical and the horizontal scalability. Talking about consensus, what's the major difference between your proof of stake model and say Ethereum's proof of stake model? Um, they're similar in a number of ways. So the latest iteration of Casper um, looks quite similar to Tendermint, at least on the surface. It uses the same um, Byzantine fault tolerant constructions, mm. essentially. Some of the major differences are around uh, the censorship resistance and availability guarantees of Casper. So the focus of Casper is really trying to um, really trying to focus on, on making sure that the system is always available, uh, even if it means in the short term we're not getting some kind of finality so that the blocks are always being produced, even if there aren't strong economic guarantees that they're gonna be finalized. And additionally, Casper makes, uh, let's call it much more draconian uh, rules around punishments of validators. So not only do they punish validators for double signing, which Tendermint also does, uh, but they're very strict about punishing when there may or may not have been censorship. It's very mm. hard to detect censorship in one of these public systems, but anything that looks like it could be censorship, Casper is, is, is trying to punish to basically uh, prevent colluding validators. Tendermint and Cosmos takes a slightly less um, Byzantine position on that, I guess, draconian position. And you guys raised, uh, how much did you guys raise uh, earlier this year? So in April, we did a public fundraiser. We raised uh, around $16 million in 30 minutes. Beautiful. Yeah. And so where are you on the roadmap right now? We're coming along. Um, we just published a very extensive analysis of the Tenement Consensus Engine uh, using the Jepson Distributed Systems tool. So we really put it through the ringer and uh, it came out great. So no Tenement, as far as we know, satisfies all its guarantees. So we're really, we're really pushing to bring Tenement to a production ready status within, say, the next month. Um, we're getting close. And then on the Cosmos side, we're still building out um, uh, the framework to enable us to build the Cosmos application because again, we want to do it in a really modular fashion mm -hmm. so we don't just throw up an application but we actually provide a framework to make it easy for other people to build applications Well, talking well. about applications, what are one of your guys' first use cases you want to focus on? I think one of the first things we're really interested in is, is helping to scale Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of hype and a lot of excitement in the Ethereum community, a lot of projects that want to build there, but the current Ethereum network just doesn't have the capacity. Um, the proposed scalability designs, I think, are a little more farther out. They're very promising, but they're a little farther out. Uh, I think Cosmos is a lot closer and can provide potentially a significant upgrade to the Ethereum network in the short term. So we're hoping uh, to be able to facilitate that. So to summarize for some people that might be confused is, if I build a, an application on Ethereum, my identity and my tokens can move onto the Cosmos network. That's right. And then vice versa, back and yeah. forth. Yeah, Cool. That's right. 
Uh, so we're looking at the space right now. I know this is a little bit off tangent. Is two things I want to ask you. Number one, what's your current take of the space? Mm. And number two, where do you think we're going to be in the next year or so? Wow. My current take, um, very broad, vague question. Yeah. But, um, I'm very excited by it. I think there's a lot of really interesting things going on, a lot of cool projects. Um, a lot of people are starting to pay attention. It seems like we might be moving out of the very early adopter stage into some kind of more large um, adoption. Um, that said, I think the, all the ICO hype is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's become a little explosive. Um, I'm scared of it. There's, I think, quite a few scams out there, and I think a lot of people are gonna get burned really badly. Um, you know, I'll be on a panel later today talking about this ICO yeah. madness and basically <laughs> recommending that people not participate or yeah. do extreme due diligence or be prepared to lose all their money. Um, but you know, ICOs aside, I think there's an incredible amount of innovation. I'm particularly interested in how this space is is really making uh, cryptography and databases and like formal verification all super cool areas of computer science and mm. really kind of giving AI a run for its money. And, and I think this is a way more important space to be in right now than AI. We have a lot of work to do on the socioeconomic foundations of society. It's practical because you can use it right away. You can use it right away and it really provides new ways for, for humans to coordinate and collaborate. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's enormous potential there for solving like really fundamental issues in society. Beautiful. I think we'll keep it at that. We'll keep it nice and short. Ethan, thank you cool. so much Thanks for coming so much, Amir. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you, best way? Um, I'm on Twitter, Buckmanster. You can just search for Ethan Buckman, B-U-C-H-M-A-N, um, and connect with me there. Awesome, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Peace. Thanks.